He's led Russia for more than 20 years, but President Vladimir Putin wants more. Now essentially guaranteeing he'll hold power until at least 2030 by saying he's running for re-election. What's different this time is Russian-occupied regions of Ukraine will participate in Russia's presidential election. It's not really an election so much as Putin looking to kind of uh, affirm and strengthen his own position uh, in fighting this war. Across Ukraine, people are bracing for wintertime attacks on critical infrastructure. Friday morning, these first responders in Kharkiv removed debris at one of the scenes of a Russian cruise missile strike, the first attack of its kind in nearly 80 days. Here in Washington, the White House is urging Congress to approve additional security assistance and quickly painting a picture of the situation Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is in right now. You're looking out across that front and you see a lot of Russians. Uh, you see a lot of Russians that are getting increased by, in size because Mr. Putin continues to recruit uh, uh, additional manpower and throw them into the fight. In a recent interview with a German outlet, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said they should be prepared for bad news out of Ukraine Einzige, was wir and urged member nations to ramp up production of ammunition. The White House says within a matter of weeks, it will run out of resources to provide Ukraine with security assistance. And that's just, that, that should be unacceptable to everybody. There's broad bipartisan support in Congress to get it done, but... I will not go back to South Carolina and try to explain why I helped Ukraine, Taiwan, and Israel and did nothing to secure our own border. Republicans insisting they condition new aid for Ukraine on border and immigration policy changes. No small task, it's long been one of the most difficult issues for Washington to address, even before war in Eastern Europe raised the stakes. On Capitol Hill, I'm Atra Elnishar reporting.